Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. As promised on Instagram stories, today I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite affordable perfumes. So everything we're gonna talk about today is a 1.7 fluid ounce, less than $100. I asked you guys what cutoff you preferred, either 100 or 200. 100 won the majority of votes, and I do think it is almost the perfect little sweet spot because you're still within the designer price range, even though it is towards the bottom. With $100, you can absolutely afford a luxury fragrance, something very sophisticated that will elevate your entire collection and help boost your confidence. To make it easy to follow along, I'm presenting these in order of cost, starting with the most expensive, working down to the least expensive fragrance on the list, and I'm starting with a brand new launch coming in at $99 for a 1.7 fluid ounce bottle. It just makes the cut. This is the new Marc Jacobs Daisy Oh So Intense. This was sent to me complimentary about a week ago and I think it is so nice. It's a little bit sweet, fruity, floral, perfect for a summer date night. I think it's really nice for evenings and I think if you love the original Daisy for daytime, you will love this new intense version. Keynotes include strawberry pear, sweet honey, soft vanilla, rosebud, and a crisp green moss. Ah, <sighs> very fruity right away. Definitely pick up the strawberry and the pear, but I almost get a hint of cucumber or something else in there that kind of mellows the fruitiness. But it is a juicy, juicy fruit, almost jammy and is a little bit sweet. You get the honey, but then as it dries down, you really pick up on the vanilla, which I love. When I first sprayed this, I thought, mm, that's really nice, but maybe a bit too young for my taste. But as it dried down, it really grew on me and this entire room smelled like Daisy Oh So Intense for a couple days and I loved it. You would just walk in here and smell the room. It's heavenly. If you like sweet, fruity, floral types of fragrances, I think you will love this. And there's something very unique about it. I don't think it will get lost in the sea of fruity florals that are out there. It almost reminds me of a Chanel Chance Eau Tendre, but this is an Eau de Parfum concentration. Maybe Joy by Dior. I think if you love those types of fragrances, you will also really like this. It's brand new, it's beautiful. It won't break the bank, coming in at $99. And for reference, this is the size of the bottle. This is the 50 ml, so it's a really great size. $99 will also get you a 50 ml of Burberry Her, or My Burberry. I believe they're both the same price point. I also really love My Burberry, but here I have a rollerball of Burberry Her, and this is just an incredible designer fragrance. It's often compared to Baccarat Rouge 540, which I do see the similarities, although they are very different fragrances. But if you love that fragrance, but you're not willing to shell out several hundred dollars for the bottle, I think Burberry Her is a great alternative. It's a fruity floral with keynotes of dark berries, jasmine, musk, and amber, created by the same nose, Francis Kirgian himself. As I smell it right now, I don't think they smell the same at all. Still incredible though. I don't think it really does the fragrance justice to constantly compare it to Baccarat. They are totally different, but it still captures that vibrant wow factor. I think it is an incredibly sophisticated fragrance. The dry down is amazing. It's a showstopper. You can walk into the room and people are going to turn heads. They're going to pay you a lot of compliments whenever you wear this fragrance. Just really delicious. This is a confidence booster for sure. One of the best fragrances you can buy for less than $100. Next on the list is a perfume oil, not a perfume spray. These launched a couple months ago from Nest, and I think this is going to go down as one of the best fragrance launches of 2021. It's definitely one of my favorite things. I have Turkish Rose here, but I also have the vanilla, I think it's Madagascar Vanilla, Seville Orange in my collection, but they have several other fragrances. If none of those speak to you, if you're not really a rose fan, I would definitely check out some of the other oils that they offer, but if you do love Rose, specifically if you really love Delina from Parfum de Marly, I think you will love this Turkish Rose Perfume Oil from Nest. Now there are several notable differences between a perfume oil and a perfume spray. One of them is that the oil sits closer to the skin, so you're not going to get the same projection that you might get out of a perfume spray. 
it's also going to stay constant throughout the life of the fragrance. You don't really get top notes, middle notes, trail. With the perfume oil, if you like it at the beginning, you're going to like it at the end. It's a classic floral with keynotes of dewy Turkish rose, black plum, hints of saffron warmed by blonde woods. And the Turkish rose extract is blended with baobab oil for a formula that melts into the skin, leaving behind a long-lasting fragrance. It comes in a one fluid ounce bottle for $98, and the way I like to apply this oil is to just take a couple drops and drop it right into your hand, and then you just smooth it all over your skin. You can do your neck, your chest, your arms. This smell is so incredible. It almost smells fruity, like a fruity floral with lots of rose, but it is such a nice rose. And what's great is that you can then layer your fragrance on top. That way it lasts a really long time because your skin is hydrated and moisturized from the perfume oil. So I might do a couple drops of the Turkish rose oil and then spritz on Delina or Limperatrice or some other fruity floral fragrance that I think will complement the perfume oil. It's beautiful, just a heavenly fragrance. Another one of my favorite perfume launches from 2020 at $98, you can purchase the Giorgio Armani My Way 1.7 fluid ounce bottle, which is this size right here. It's a really decent size. And it's a classic floral and just a beautiful perfume. I think this could be your everyday fragrance. It's a great signature scent. It has keynotes of orange blossom, tuberose, jasmine, white musk, cedarwood, and vanilla. It's very creamy, which I love, but it's a floral creaminess. It doesn't really smell like a baked goods vanilla or a sweet vanilla. It does have a little sweetness, but it's just floral, very flowery, maybe even a little bit powdery. I love it though. It's so nice. But I do think this is more of a daytime, everyday, go-to perfume. Not something that you would necessarily wear for evenings, date nights, weekends, special occasions, but really beautiful. Next, we have two of my favorites from Dolce & Gabbana, and these are actually the 30 ml bottles. So this is I think a really decent size for both of these, but for 50 ml, the 1.7 fluid ounce, $96, you can pick up Dolce & Gabbana Shine or Dolce & Gabbana The One. I often talk about this fragrance as being one of the classics, one of my all-time favorites. This one came out in 2020, towards the beginning of last year, so it's still new-ish. This one came out in 2006, so it's definitely more of a classic fragrance, although I still think it has modern appeal, but they're very different, both very beautiful in their own way. So Dolce & Gabbana Shine is a fruity floral with keynotes of mango, jasmine, and blonde woods. It's a very zesty, fruity floral. Ah, it's just like a breath of fresh air, a breath of sunshine. Instantly reminds me of summer, being outside, maybe some sort of birthday party, bridal shower, baby shower, some sort of event, some festive activity outdoors. That's what this reminds me of. It's very smooth. Definitely get the mango. It's kind of a smooth, sweet creaminess from the mango. And then it goes into the vanilla. And it's just light and happy. One of the happiest perfumes in my entire collection and I remember searching for fragrances when I picked this up and I think I gasped and I audibly was like, wow, this is amazing the first time I smelled it. It's delicious. It's so sophisticated. I hate the bottle, but I love the perfume so much I went ahead and I picked it up anyway. Well, Dolce & Gabbana The One is a warm and sweet gourmand perfume. It has keynotes of amber, jasmine, peach, vanilla, and musk. It's seasonless. It's timeless. So elegant. I always just picture the most chic and sophisticated, well-put-together, wealthy woman. Whenever I smell Dolce & Gabbana The One, there's just something about it. Like D&G Shine, it's very smooth, but I think this one is a lot more sophisticated. Where Shine, I think, is very spring-summer, very happy, daytime. I think Dolce & Gabbana The One is more of a power fragrance. It's a little bit fruity, a little bit sweet, but this one is more of a gourmand. It kind of has that warmth, a touch of powder. 
but not too much. Doesn't matter how old this is. I don't think this is ever going to smell mature. Doesn't smell like an old lady. It just smells like the lady who's in charge. <laughs> Here's another new launch from spring 2021, Versace Dylan Turquoise. This is the latest interpretation of their classic Dylan Blue. It is an eau de toilette, so it's a bit lighter, but we've kind of tiptoed down the price ladder. So we've exited the 90s, we're now in the $80 price range. So for a 50 ml bottle, you can purchase Versace Dylan Turquoise for just $84 very reasonable. It's a zesty fresh floral fragrance with keynotes of lemon, Italian mandarin, transparent jasmine petals, guava, freesia, and musk. Mm, it's so fresh and zesty right away. I pick up a lot of lemon and mandarin. It's very aquatic, almost like a men's cologne, but a unisex version. It's very clean, kind of fresh out of the ocean. This would be a perfect fragrance to wear every single day, definitely, if you're spending a lot of time outside. I don't always recommend it, but I do often get questions about what type of fragrance should you wear to the gym. And if you choose to wear a fragrance, of course you want to wear something a bit lighter. I think this is kind of that perfect day out on the boat, day of activities, gym fragrance. The next two perfumes I have here to talk about are both $82, but the reason why I'm talking about them together is because they're a bit older, and I found when looking for incredible fragrances under $100, a lot of what you will find is older because the price of fragrance, like the price of everything else, has just continued to rise every single year. You'll notice maybe a couple dollars every single year, your favorite fragrances are slowly getting more expensive. And then the new fragrances to launch, they just already start very expensive. So if you're looking for something under $100, you might wanna look at some of the older classics. D&G number three, Limperatrice. I love this perfume. What's great about this is for $84, you actually get 3.3 fluid ounces of fragrance. It is an eau de toilette. It's a bit lighter. It's not going to be as long lasting as an eau de parfum or a parfum, but it's nice that for the lower price, you get a huge bottle. And then here I have Gucci Rush. This has always been one of my favorites. To this day, I still think it smells very modern. And this is a 50 milliliter bottle for $84. Something really cool about Gucci Rush is that because it's not as popular anymore, and I think the only reason it's not really popular is because it is older, not a lot of people wear this, so you're going to stand out. It almost has that unique factor. It's kind of the perfect throwback. This, I think, is a bit more evening weekend. Could be your everyday perfume, could be your signature scent if you really wanted it to be but I think there's kind of a warmth and a sensuality to this that you don't get with the others. Wow, I almost didn't talk about it. I almost left this off the list because it is so old, but I thought that's just ridiculous because it is a beautiful fragrance. I don't wanna discriminate just because it launched in 1999. When I think about my entire collection and the best fragrances under 100, this definitely makes the list. Even though it's old, nobody really talks about it anymore. It's just a classic. D&G number three, Limperatrice, is a fruity floral fragrance with keynotes of watermelon, kiwi, and sandalwood. Mmm, I love this perfume. It is so pretty. It's just bright, happy, it's fresh. Mm, this is another one similar to Versace Dylan Turquoise. You could kind of spray it on anytime if you're going outdoors, spring, summer. It's kind of the perfect everyday perfume. But this one is more feminine. I also really love this bottle. I think it's so chic. It reminds me a lot of the Privé lines from Chanel, Dior, Armani. It's very clean and sophisticated the opposite of Dolce & Gabbana Shine, but it's kind of a similar perfume. I think if you like Shine, you'll probably like Limperatrice. But I think for the price, for the amount you get, for the bottle size, this is really hard to beat. For just $81, you can purchase a 50 milliliter bottle of Giorgio Armani Ocean de Joa, another one of my favorite discoveries of 2020. And this is, I think, a 
30 milliliter. Yes, it is teeny tiny on there. So the 50 ml is going to be almost double the size of this bottle. And even this I think is a decent size. So if you want to go even lower, a lot of these fragrances are offered in 30 milliliter or one ounce bottles. Some of them even travel sprays, roller balls is sometimes a really nice way to go. Especially if you want to have more of a perfume wardrobe. You like to pick and choose different fragrances for different occasions. Now, if you're looking for a signature scent or you have a fragrance that you just love, it's always a better buy to go for a larger bottle, the economy size, if you will. So small bottles are nice because you can try a fragrance, wear it for maybe a season or two, and then decide whether or not you want to invest in the full size Ocean de Joa is a fruity floral with keynotes of sparkling pear, water jasmine, and sandalwood. I believe this was the first aquatic fragrance I added to my collection. So pretty. It's just sparkling, fresh, fruity, similar to D&G Limperatrice. Very similar. I think Ocean de Joa is a bit more floral than L'Imperatrice, but still, if you like one, I think you will like the other. It could be daytime, evening, some mermaid perfume, just beautiful. Now here's an unexpected choice. Towards the bottom of the list, we have two more fragrances left to talk about. There's one after this, Chanel. Would you have guessed that Chanel would have been one of the least expensive fragrances on the list? Probably not, but Paris Venice is one of the best Chanel fragrances and you can pick up a 50 milliliter bottle for just $80. And if you don't like Paris Venice, you might really like Deauville or Riviera is so beautiful. I recently tried the new Edinburgh. I don't really like it. It's not for me. I didn't think it would be for me. Whenever I read the notes, I kind of ruled it out right away, but then I did get a couple samples from I think one of my last purchases at the boutique. It smells very green, kind of foresty. This entire collection is meant to be sort of unisex, but Edinburgh is very masculine in my opinion, whereas Paris Venice I think is the most feminine of this entire line. Paris Venice is a bit warmer, more sensual. I think it is more of a fall winter appropriate fragrance. It's an amber perfume with keynotes of orange, lemon, pedigrain, bergamot, pink pepper, iris, neroli, rose, geranium, Base notes are tonka bean, vanilla, white musk, orris, violet, and benzoin. If I had to rank all of these fragrances in order of my favorites instead of cost, Paris Venice would be towards the top. So I really think this is one of the best perfumes you can buy under $100. Even this 4.2 fluid ounce bottle retails for $130, which isn't terrible. So if you decided that you really loved it, that's definitely the way to go, the better buy. But you can pick this up for $80. That's a great steal. Last but certainly not least is another new launch and I tried to include as many new launches as possible on this list. It's from Floral Street. This is Arizona Bloom. A 1.7 fluid ounce bottle of this fragrance cost $78. I was blown away whenever I saw that price on the Sephora website. This is the 1.7 fluid ounce, the 50 ml. I love this perfume so much. I think the bottle is a bit deceiving because you see these bright yellow flowers with the vibrant blue background and you might think it's going to be zesty, maybe citrusy and fresh, but it's actually more warm and sensual. It's a warm sweet gourmand with keynotes of coconut, jasmine, and salted musk. And I definitely pick up on the coconut. I think this would be so beautiful for summertime, maybe a date night. It's light enough that I think it could be daytime, but I think it's kind of the perfect evening fragrance for the hot months. It's so beautiful. It's kind of smooth and creamy. Like a creamy coconut with a hint of, I don't know, something, caramel. And there's a little bit of sweetness and I understand why it would be a warm and sweet gourmand, but it doesn't smell like baked goods in my opinion. It's very different from some of the other gourmands in my collection. It's incredible. This would also be one of my favorites on the list. It would be up there. At $78, it's the most affordable fragrance on the list. I also think it's probably 
the sexiest, the most date night appropriate of all of the other fragrances here. It's warm, it's creamy, incredibly feminine, just beautiful. This is one of my favorite fragrances to launch so far this year. That's all I have to share with you today. It is worth noting that if you're willing to spend a little bit more than $100, you could opt for a Miss Dior, J'adore, Coco Mademoiselle, Chanel Allure. There are several other big designer perfumes that are around 100. I think they start closer to 106, 108 in that range. $100 was a hard cutoff for this list. The more you're willing to spend, of course, the more options you have when it comes to luxury designer perfumes. If you don't want to spend $100, this list proves that you can still get a really incredible fragrance. But that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you found it helpful. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I would love to hear from you guys if you have any alternatives to add to this list. If you know of any great fragrances under $100, let us know down below in the comment section. I love bouncing ideas off of everybody and going through and reading your recommendations. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.